Hi all, this is uh, Arjun Paliwal, Head of Research at Investicate, and I'm here joined by a good friend and valued client, Daniel. Uh, hey, Daniel, how are you? Good, mate. No, that, that's good. Enjoying. That's good, my friend. Um, look, I, I wanted to say massive thanks for taking the time out to have this chat. I thought it'd be great for people to learn more about your journey, uh, investing in property, uh, um, and also just, you know, learn more about uh, the outcomes through this journey as well and, and what's occurred. So um, I might crack straight into it, if that's cool with you. Yeah, let's go. Fantastic. So Daniel, if we if we go back to, you know, where it all started together, um, actually, even before, even after that, if we just go to where we are today, you've built a, a multi-million dollar property portfolio across, you know, multiple states. And I want to unpack that journey a little bit in terms of starting at the start of this whole journey, what made you switch the gear to kind of say, say, Hey, hold on. I've got a couple of properties. Now I really want to start building a portfolio. What was the moment for you that made you want to do that? Uh, it was a couple of things, to be honest. Um, for many years, uh, I was trying to, you know, get my business off the ground, try to get some traction uh, at the same time, maybe, you know, a bit lack of knowledge and all I was concentrating on was paying down my, the home I live in. Uh, I was concentrating on that a bit too much, got a bit sidetracked to the business. Business wasn't doing well for many years. And then I think in the, you know, towards the end of 2019, it was, things started clicking, the business started taking off. Uh, we started making some money uh, and I knew I wanted to put it somewhere. And, and at the same time too, we had a bit of equity in, the, in, in, in my family home, uh, had some, some family cash as well. So yeah, it kind of, stars aligned i should say and i knew i wanted to do something um some kind of a investing in property was first first on my list um yeah so that's that's pretty much the, the sum of it yeah so the the strength in your business obviously propelled propelled you forward as well on this journey and and we took action i think on the first place together in brisbane if i'm not mistaken yeah banya and um, the suburb of Banyo, correct? So we purchased that, what, pre-COVID, before, before the world uh, the world went pretty crazy, if I'm not mistaken, it was around, you know, 20, 2019 or late 2019, if that's correct? Yeah, oh, I think we signed on early 2020, which COVID was really, really um, in its infancy kind of stage for Australia anyway. Yeah. Uh, and I think we, we purchased that property in April or signed exchange contracts in April. Yeah, so that's uh, that's pretty much just around the time everything was everything was happening. Now, yeah. looking at that property, if we think of why Brisbane, um, I, I might just jump in here and share some thoughts. So, Brisbane hadn't had a huge run, so it hadn't grown amazing. So we we always like that when that that sort of starts. The next thing it was it was before everything went too crazy in Brisbane and and grew obviously a lot. Um, and lastly, we saw from a perspective of pipeline of infrastructure, uh, low supply, all these different things come in together. But this is the first time you're investing out of state, right? So you had multiple properties in New South Wales at the time. What made you feel comfortable to A, not even look at the property, but B, go to a whole new location? You know what? To make it worse, I would call this the, the probably first official investment property. The, 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 the properties I have in Sydney aren't, I don't call them investment properties because I bought them for a specific purpose. Uh, on paper, yes, they are investment properties, but not, not like this. So that fear was even greater than you, you, you just made it sound. Um, but what, what made me, what made me pull the trigger? I, I guess, first of all, the referrals are great. So um, you came from a good friend of mine, Tuan, uh, which is, um, he's in the business of, you know, he does tax appreciation stuff. Um, so he, he's a top guy and obviously I would assume that he would refer me a top guy. Um, and I look, I, I did vet other buyers agents as well, but for some reason I felt a bit more genuine, a lot more genuineness, a lot more real the way you put it. Um, yeah. So that, that's what made me feel really comfortable. And I guess that that's what kicked it off. Right. Um, and from that point, um, I guess everything you were saying, um, to be real, to be super honest with you, at the beginning, I don't know what's what. I mean, I just you're just telling me what what it is, and and the way I do business is I've got to give it a shot. I've got to give it a try. Now, I guess if you, I don't know, if you didn't work, turn out to be how what you said, um, everything would be luck. Then I, I don't think we'll, we'll jump into property two, three, 
four or right now I've just done my five with you, right? So you, you definitely um, come up with the goods. So, well, I mean, you purchased that for what, 550,000, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And so we had our latest valuation for that come back at 855,000. So that's a $300,000 increase. How does that make you feel now looking back at it about that decision you made? Oh, great, man. Awesome. But I got to, I got to give you another one here. Um, soon after we settled the, the tenants moved out and you told me that area had a low vacancy rate. So on one hand, I was like, Oh shit. Um, oh, what do I do? But then I remembered you go, the, the properties that you pick are, are low vacancy, low stock, you know, not much supply there and, and all that kind of stuff that you go through. And I go, good, let's put this, let's put this guy to the test because you know, if this doesn't work out, then I'm not using you again. And guess what, man? I, I, the thing went to an open home. I think three families went in or three applicants. And I was like, oh, this is going to be shit. You know, we're not going to get a tenant. And guess what? We've got a tenant in the first open home during okay. COVID. That was smack bang in bloody, what is it? August of 2020 or something, something like that. So that was awesome, man. So <laughs> that was probably better than the feeling that I have now with the, with the increase or with the valuation increase. Well, I mean, the, the thing that's important now is that like that result didn't show the growth didn't show until now. Right. Meaning looking True. back at it. So you didn't just stop at that investment though, because you didn't have a chance or time to look at that capital growth of that. You still progressed ahead. So when it comes to just that time, like, you know, businesses were being shut around the world. People were going into lockdown in and out. Um, some businesses were fortunate, some businesses were unfortunate, and you didn't have to invest anymore, right? You could have picked another time later. What made you progress from there? Because we wanted an, we went on an aggressive buying journey over the years ahead and purchased a total of five more properties, right? Or four more properties on top of that. So what made you feel comfortable just during this time of chaos in the world to continue going? Well, that first property gave me a lot of confidence with working with you, your team, the way you I guess pick your properties, analyze all the data and all that. First of all, that that gave me the, the most confidence. Firstly, uh, secondly, I don't know uh, things like that don't really worry me too much. Maybe I'm a bit naive um, that COVID was going to affect the property market. Um, I guess you you had some thoughts around that as well. It wasn't going to change. Like people still need to rent. It's, people still need to live. Um, a mix of both and i thought you know as always property i mean if you can write it out you'll be you'll be okay and this is a long-term uh investment thing so sorry go back to banya even with that the 855 evaluation i mean it doesn't really mean anything until you actually sell right so that could go down the next couple of years so buying a property i felt during covid if if the value was dropping even a better time to buy Mm. Uh, the way I saw it. So know? do you carry that mindset now in the same way with interest rates rising and things like that? Do you feel it's a buyers and people should look at it the same way? Yeah, they, they should. But also you, you got to have the right people on your side. So with all your data, your research and all that, that all comes into play as well. It's not just buying blindly. Um, and I, I feel with, especially with you, um, you find the right pockets for, for the situation or for that period or that time. It's not like you're always buying the same area, you know, so. Well, that, well, that takes me to the next point because because you raise a really good point around not buying in the same area. You got in your first interstate investment, your first taste of it. And it almost felt like we just like cut open all the borders of Australia and just said, let's, let's go national completely. Let's look all over. There wasn't any attachment to capital cities, regional cities. It was just this whole thinking of, look, everywhere's got a market out there. So what made you feel comfortable about that? Because I'm not sure if you had this in your circle, but there's many people who feel capital investments should be better or regional investments, residential, commercial. Because looking at the portfolio, we went on to then go from Brisbane. We had Bendigo, Adelaide, Bundaberg, and commercial. These are not similar cities. They're all very different. What made you now get that next level of comfort considering so many people maybe don't feel as comfortable with all of this? It's just the trust and you're a professional in your field. I'm not, I'm not going to 
fuck around with trying my luck at you know different areas or what I think I know or my own research uh, it comes back to yeah back to trust and um I feel like at the time I feel like you know what you're talking about again even with after Banya we went to regional Victoria in um Bendigo mm. again I was uncomfortable but that's you brought up good good facts good um good points and I, I can't what's the point if I engage with you and, and do what I think is best mm. do you know what I mean like that, that that defeats the purpose of it so we only can try and at the end of the day again if you're wrong it's a property I'll, I'll write it out I'll sell it at break even or maybe I might even lose but in the long term I don't think that would happen um, and sorry, can I bring back, you asked the question about Banyo. How did I feel about not looking at it? Yeah. I get this one, right? I, I actually went to Brisbane last year and I drove past that property and past the, the commercial one that we settled on last year as well. And I literally stood there for about five minutes. I don't know what the fuck I'm looking at, man. <laughs> like, even if the tenant or the agent let me in, what am I looking at? I'm not a builder by trade. I don't know you know what so it, that just proved to me that i don't need to look at it. it this is not meant to be an emotional buy that you you buy a property you're going to eventually live in because mm -hmm. i see a lot of my friends do that that they want to invest in something that oh maybe we can live in there down the track no i i don't think you you should are you buying to live in or are you buying for the metrics and the numbers and the numbers have to work you can't do both i feel mm. what's your thoughts on that well i mean i think like not only the looking at and living in part, you actually also took that across the actual finishes of the property because none of these properties look the same. You know, yeah. I think you took it one step deeper as well and said, like the, the Brisbane Banyo property is a single level brick home, some partially renovated, the kitchen's epic, but the rest of the house is okay. Um, number two is there wasn't this crazy filter of, of like, hey, I need huge land size or I need all this subdivision potential or anything like that. The next property we had, in Bendigo was a, you know, aged block of units. Um, then the Adelaide one was a super flashy home. I'd live in that one. Uh, it's a pretty nice home, you know, with some views and things like that. But there wasn't any intent behind this. So I think the power of you having that mindset was that there was no intent around a type of home, a type of look, a type of feel. You just went with the same mindset of diversifying locations. It's ticking Arjun's and the Investigate team's research. I'm growing my wealth. It's renting for a good amount. It's renting easily. So I do agree that you didn't just apply it to the whole look at it part. You applied it across the whole buying piece. And I think I try to take the emotion out. And obviously, if the house looks beautiful, does that mean I should pay more for it? No. <laughs> I'm sure the seller's agent would have loved that, man. So, Because uh... <laughs> I had a friend ask me, you know, you're spending half a million dollars to quarter, uh, three quarters of a million dollars. Don't you want to go look at it? Because, you know, when I buy a car, 100,000, 150,000, I'll go look at it. Or at least I'll send someone to go look at it. Why? Because that's an emotional buy. It's not, it's not a, this is a business. I, I feel like property is a, is, a, is a business. Great way to put it. I mean, speaking of the business, we went to Bendigo next. We bought a block of units. And if I'm not mistaken, this is your first taste of off-market property as well, right? This wasn't online. Uh, this was off-market. And yes. we purchased it through one of my connections. I actually purchased a property in the same city through the same sales agent as part of building the relationship. So how comfortable did you feel that not only did we purchase obviously together and it was past your first experience, but you also purchased in a city where I chucked my own dollars. Was that important to you as well? Oh, I guess a little bit, um, maybe 10, 15% of it kind of sunk in. But again, it goes back to the research, the way you explain things made sense and, and going through the suburb analysis, I think that was first um yeah it all kind of fit and look i'm a bit of a details guy but a lot of what you tell me does go over my head but as long as the overall picture i feel like you know what you're talking about um but being uncomfortable again yeah you're right it, it was uncomfortable in three blocks uh, three units the one in uh, kangaroo flat so that, that yeah that was three man like i was like well that's okay i, I kind of looked at it as one purchase to be honest mm. Um, so what we bought for 9.30, I know there was three, but if I looked at it as one property, it, it wouldn't have really changed much. So, you know what, again, let's give this a shot. It is about trying something new. I mean, I do like living my life in, in you know, 
magic happens. I love the saying, um, you know, your comfort zone, the magic happens outside of your comfort zone. So, yeah, I was uncomfortable, but I felt like I was, I felt you had, you were holding my hand and you're holding it tightly and, and, and taking me through these, these steps. And you know what? Again, now um, you said I was under rented. That freaked me out as well. You go, don't worry, it's, it's under rented, but that's why we're buying it. And then once, once the leases are up, we'll, we'll up the rents. And I was like, all right, let's put this guy to the test again because <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Like, uh, to be honest, I, I, yeah. But anyway, that time came. We, I think two of the units were 255 and one of them was, um, was it 280 or 26? 280, I think it was. Hmm. One, the first unit was out, for, uh, finished at least first, 255. I think you appraised it at 300 to 320. Mm. I love how conservative you are with this one. This is great. So 300 to 320. We listed it for, for 340 and we got it. Yeah. I was wow. like, oh, shit. All right, awesome. What, what's that going up by? Um, $85 on one unit. Massive. So a couple of months later, the next unit um, was out of lease as well. Two, uh, that was another 255er. Went straight to 340 with confidence. So now that's, what's that? My mouse is shit. 160, 170. Yeah, 170. 680, we, just two of those units now. Now, number three, late last year, or the third one, um, the old paying 280. Um, kind of older lady. I think she's got some mobility problems. So we kind of didn't really want to, and she wanted to stay, she didn't want to go. So the mm. other two units were, new tenants so it's a bit easy kind of to make that big jump yeah anyway um so we only went up to 300 for her uh, with the intent to go up again in 12 months yeah um, yeah that was a massive test for me uh, for you like i should say more for you than for me well i mean the the power of that though is there's an again another point of backing the future state of a property not the current state and that's kind of a testament to you on the research that you're looking at because uh, and you've acted on because what happens is many people look at the current rents and they go, oh, this is just agent talk. You know what I mean? Like it's renting for that much. That's what it's worth. How, how, how can it be what that future state looks like? Because right now, if we look at that, that's close to $1,000 of rent, just over 1000 if you get them all to market. Um, and putting that on a yield perspective of, you know, four and a half to five, which is what's happening in Bendigo right now for these blocks that takes the value to that 1.2 mil plus range and it hasn't even been long. And so that's the power of these block moves. But the whole idea is that you're able to look at it and agree with the notion that it's under rented because many would have looked at that current rent and gone, that's not a good deal on paper. Um, so I think hats off to you again for just trusting that whole component of the market's got more to deliver here. It's under rented. There's a vacancy rate that's super low. There's a rental crisis and you took action to make that happen. So, so yeah. Um, we went on from there then to Adelaide, right, as the next purchase. And yeah. this Adelaide purchase was an interesting one because um, we'd had a look at it at first. And I think we were kind of like, nah, this is a bit higher on the price side. I don't think we'd get it for that cheap. And then if I'm not mistaken, there was a drop deal, like someone went for it and we didn't quite get it. Then they dropped the deal and it was available all of a sudden from, a, from the real estate yeah, agent. It wasn't which... our first uh, option, I remember. Yeah. I think yeah. it was a second option for us because we presented a couple and we were thinking that now nah, this one will sell for a bit more than what I think and the numbers might not work and the yield might not be there. And do the we want was a one that? story or something closer to the water? Yeah, yeah something That's like right. that. And so this one we ended up purchasing into this high sevens and uh, uh, in a suburb called Shido Park, which is uh, the south side of uh, Adelaide. Now, what was interesting about it again was uh, this wasn't your typical just, hey, straight away, get into it. There was some works to do, right? There was paint. There was a few other things to do. And, and you jumped on that. And, and Actually, to be honest, we could have left it, though. It wasn't that bad. We could have. But I mean, if you think about the rental result that came off the back of it, that was massive, right? I think, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, that rented for 680 uh, Listed for 680 We got 780 for it. Yeah, wow. So someone came and paid $100 more. That's yeah. a big rental crisis, like right away. So how did you feel about, you know, making that investment? And again, seeing that, seeing that rental result now, like, because looking back at it again, I think this is another test moment for me, right? Because this is the first time you're now doing work on a property. 
you keep testing me, Arjun. I don't know <laughs> how much more I can take. No, I'm kidding. I love these tests, right? Every property comes with its, its new uncomfortable area and I'm learning so much as, as we go. And, and with that Shadow Park one, I remember you said, look, we can probably get between, I think you said like 580 to 620 mm. uh, if, if you leave it as it is. But if you spend, you know, five ten thousand 10,000 in, you know, new fresh coat of paint, uh, I think we put some built-in wardrobes. Uh, I think we yeah. spent about what ten to fifteen k on that, maybe less. Yeah, eventually. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So you said if you spend that, um, you might be able to push your rents to something between six forty to six eighty. And I said, you know what? Might as well. This is the best time to 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 do any work when there's no tenants. Um, that wasn't already tenanted, so it was an owner occupied. That I think we bought it from. So again with your advice well, I, mean, you know, I, I can i can spare that money so okay and i want to try it i want, I want to see what what became of it and yeah we we listed it for 680 which i think your uh, your appraisal again was quite conservative keep that up man like that conservatism it, it works great so you said 640 to 680 i think it was um yeah we had a, a couple of people come in and i got the report back from the agent someone offered 780 i said i think there's a typo here <laughs> okay is that normal i'm new to all this renting stuff as well she goes no it's not normal yeah we get 30 maybe 40 50 more a week never 100 mm. and i just said really well if they're serious sign the lease let's go and then look they, they signed a one-year lease it's not like they're signing a three to six month lease so that's freaking crazy. What does that work out a year? What five? Um, that that's an extra five thousand dollars plus in rental income, uh, which again easily soaks up any interest rate rise that's happened since then. And what purchasing the property high sevens, it's very rare to see a rental yield like that on a standalone house. Uh, I don't think I've seen it today. And I think you you helped me a lot with the Reno ideas and approving and, and and you know looking at the cost. So that that was. Um, that was awesome part of the service as well. Um, yeah, so it's not just finding the property, it's everything else after that that gives me that trust um, and, and gives me that um, the ability to even be able to refer you. I'm, I'm really worried about referring the wrong people. Um, and, and that cost, the agent fee, man, it, it works out to be about less than 2% of the property. People, they look at that figure and, and they're worried about it being a lot. It is a lot, but look what you're buying. Mm. you're spending half a mil three quarters of a mil i mean some of my properties have been over a mil the rate doesn't your fee is fixed but i mean yeah that's that's only two percent guys i mean or less i should say if it's more yeah now, that's, that's something to consider from there we didn't stop and the, it seems like you just continue to want to take advantage of your business growth your your confidence you're building and investing um, the, the momentum that you had, we went along and purchased two more properties. So one in Bundaberg um, in the suburb of Bagara. Yeah. And then we went to purchase a, a commercial property off market in Brisbane. So this is your, you know, foray into commercial. Uh, as a business owner, I felt, you know, from looking at your perspective as a business owner, you felt a lot more comfortable going into commercial than a typical, um, you know, person who is not perhaps in business, looking at it from that perspective going on the other side of commercial property, you've now had a couple of months in, you know, the tenants there and everything. Has that felt pretty seamless since you've, since you've purchased that commercial property? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy yields. It's all, almost at 6%. Um, yeah. No, I, I feel, I mean, I've got to say that the commercial journey is a lot harder. Mm. Uh, it's a lot tougher. There's so much more to look at. Fees cost more. Everything costs more about it. Uh, I really like residential more than commercial, but, <laughs> no, I wouldn't have done that on my own. No way. Yeah. Um, and that was now coming back to the next point, which is, you know, using a professional each time, it's not cheap. And yeah. this is where, if I'm not mistaken, together on this journey over the last couple of years, you spent almost $60,000 in fees with us across multiple properties, having purchased again and again and again. If you look at it and go, the output of what you've spent on to get or build this portfolio and the, the different aspects that's helped you with, 
how do you imagine the state of maybe not spending this money doing it yourself versus having someone on your side and having us support you? What do you feel are the, the big differences looking back at it now? All right. If I did it myself, one, it will get done. For most people, it probably won't even get done. I've got a friend that says he'll do it himself and it's been about 18 months. He hasn't moved yet. Um, but for me, look, if I say I'll get it, then I'll get it done. But it will take me a lot longer. I think I'll buy maybe one a year, one every year and a half. I'll be damn sure I'll make some mistakes. Well, 100%. Uh, the, the kind of the knowledge is very limited. Uh, like, even if I did some research, what am I going to do? Google the best area and just trust some random that wrote a... And I'm not, no offense against that random that wrote X article that I'm reading or whatever. But then I'm going to read a couple of articles and put it all together you know, I'll blend up in my own mind and I'll find what I think is best. But what do I know? I'm not a professional in this field. I, I can't get the results as quickly or as, I guess, high quality properties as, as using a professional. So this money, man, I'm, I'm not, I'm not stopping. I'm not, I'm not interested in, um, I, not, yeah, I'm not interested in, in doing it myself. Never. It, not even after purchasing five with you, I still wouldn't use the knowledge that, I reckon I would know more than the, the normal investor now working with you, but still not interested. Yeah, uh, Markets change and, and all this stuff. This is what you do day in, day out. I can't compare to that unless I want to be a buyer's agent myself, but no, thank you. I don't enjoy. <laughs> um, you, you must enjoy that. So I'll leave it to you, mate. I'm more no, than happy no. to be a customer. <laughs> No, look, thank you for explaining your journey. And look, thanks for your time as well. The last question I want to leave you on, Daniel, is um, you've, you've done phenomenal. And I think there's many, many people who are aspiring to um, building the wealth that you've been building to date and the journey that you're on. If you're thinking of, say, others who might be earlier on in the journey, starting it out, do you have any advice for them? Look, if you want to save time and money, um, Use a professional, use a buyer's agent. I can't recommend any other buyer's agent but because I've used him myself five times and I will use him another five times. Uh, you know, we're going to sign up for another one in the next couple of months. I'm just letting things settle. Um, yeah, if you really want to get the impact as in the shortest amount of time and, and maximizing your results, yeah, use this guy. Mate. Thank you so much, Daniel, for your time. Just to recap the journey, uh, in, in a matter of what, two years, um, you've added on five investment properties from residential to commercial, to capital cities, to regional cities, houses, to unit blocks. Absolutely inspiring. I'm personally inspired by your journey and I know many others watching this are. And thank you so much for your time again. Thank you too, mate. Couldn't have done it without you. Cheers.